Today we're going to learn how to apply drag and drop to lists in React, and we're going to look at one key piece of information that many tutorials on this topic seem to leave out. Let's get right to it. Drag and drop can be a very useful feature in an application. Maybe you have a music playlist like this one, maybe an exercise app with a specific order of exercises that can be rearranged, maybe even a to-do list that allows you to rearrange the to-do items. All in all, it's a very useful feature and it's featured in lots of applications. So it's important to learn how to add drag and drop to your applications when you need it. And now let's explore this example. You can see I've just got five songs in a playlist here and I've got a little hand when I mouse over. And if I mouse over the number side, I still have the cursor. Or if I mouse over my delete button, it turns into a pointer. So I've got different options here, but now I can grab and notice the hand turns into a grip. And now I can move this song to wherever I want it. And you see an overlay as well underneath. You can see where I'm going to move it to changes. So then I can release. And then it goes ahead and puts the song where I had it and it renumbers the order. Now notice that My My Hey Hey from Neil Young is number four instead of number three where it was. I can go ahead and move Led Zeppelin to number one. Now it is number one and the Beatles are number two. So on, some classic rock songs here. I hope you like them. If you haven't, you should check them out. But out overall, what we've got is a list that can be renumbered, reordered, and of course, you can remove an item as well, like I'll remove Neil Young here. Now, I'm just using a JSON server, a mock server, so I can reload and get that back easily, and it will be back in the original order as well. But that's just for this example. There's one key piece of information we're going to cover today, too, that I don't see in a lot of drag and drop examples. Now that we've looked at the demo, we're going to spend most of the rest of this tutorial in VS Code. And I always like to start at the package JSON so you can see what I'm working with in the example, what you can download from my example code in GitHub. I've got a Next.js project, and here I'm using Next.js 14.2.5. That doesn't mean you can limit yourself, I guess, with this D&D kit that we're using today in Next.js, because really you can use it in just a normal React client side, traditional React, I should say, project. And we're going to use this D&D kit core, also D&D kit sortable and D&D kit utilities. So you'll want to install all three of those. And you can do all three at once just by opening up a terminal and I'll need to go ahead and exit out of the application that I was running here. And then I'll just paste this in and you can see npm i for install and then I've got each package typed out here separately and I've already got them installed but that would reinstall them for me, it would install them for you. And I mentioned we're using D&D Kit so here is the actual homepage for D&D Kit. They've got a lot of examples in the documentation, a lot of good information here. I'm not going to dive into it all and just repeat what's in the documentation for you. I'm just going to show you the example that I put together. Of course, you can dive into this and I'll link to the docs in the description. Get more information here if you wanna dive deeper. Okay, back in VS Code, you can see I've got a page here in Next.js and I'm just highlighting this because I am using this get data function in this page. So this would be a server side page in Next.js. Now, if you're using the traditional client side React, maybe you're requesting the data in another way. Either way, we are fetching that data with this get data function. Notice I'm just looking at localhost 3500 slash data here. And I'm doing that because I am using JSON server. So we can launch JSON server if you have the data like I have here. And I've got a bad example that I'm going to go over with you and then the actual data I'm using. So let's launch JSON server first. If you haven't worked with it, you can type npx json dash server then type db because I have a db folder slash data.json. Now we want a couple of flags also. One is dash w for watch and the other is dash p for port and we'll say port 3500. I'll enter that JSON server should find our data. It does. Here's the resource and it says that's home. So now you know it's running. Now of course to run your project you need a separate window where you would type npm 
run dev to go ahead and start up the code like I have in this example from Next.js. Okay, now that everything's running, let's go ahead and look at the data. And this is where I'm going to highlight the example that I didn't really find when I was looking at drag and drop. Maybe there's some tutorials out there that have an example like this, but I think every one of them actually should. And that's because notice I've labeled this bad data. This is just example data like you would see in a tutorial. It's for this playlist. It's got an ID for each object that's in the data array here. And then it's got artist and title. You might have description or something different in another tutorial, but essentially the same concept here. But the problem is this doesn't really cross over to the real world. In a real world example, you're going to be working with a database. Now you're going to pull from a table and it will have an ID, but the ID is almost always the primary key. You never want to change that ID. So when you would drag and drop and change the order of your list, this isn't the field you should be changing. There should be another field that's often missing from examples. So let's look at the data JSON that I'm using. You can see here I've got a sequence field as well. So typically we would refer back to this record, say for a playlist in the database, and we would say update, this record where the ID equals one. We would never want to change that primary key. But when we drag and drop and just changing the sequence of our playlist, we could go ahead and change the value for the sequence field. Or maybe somebody would call this order instead of sequence, but it means the same thing. Now, of course, there would be other fields. This is still a simple example. You might have a playlist ID in here that would be the same for each entry in this playlist. You might also have a user ID, things like that. But overall, I just want to highlight how the ID value interacts with the sequence value as we go through this tutorial. Okay, let's get started with the list component. And we're going to look at this list component as it applies to both traditional React and Next.js. Now, it's got the use client directive here for Next.js, so we know it's a client-side component. And there's a lot to import here. Let's skip over this dynamic import and we'll come back to it. But import use state because we will have a couple of instances of state. And then we also have several imports here from DD Core. I'm not going to run down each one or define each one for you, you can look at the docs for that if you want, but just know you need all of these here. And if you are using traditional client side React, you also want DND context. So go ahead and add that if you're in a React project that is not using server side. Okay, after that, you also have array move sortable context, and we want the vertical list sorting strategy all from DND kit sortable. And then there's another component that we will look at here eventually that I created called the sortable row. So I did abstract the row contents into a separate component because we'll map over the data and then each data item will be included in a row. Okay, after that, let's come back and talk about this dynamic import from Next Dynamic. Now this is only if you're using Next.js where we did not import the DND context up here with the DND kit core imports. So if you're in Next.js, you want to import dynamic here from Next Dynamic. And then down here, notice what I did. I've defined DND context with no SSR, meaning server side React, and I'm using that dynamic function. And here I'm importing from DND kit core and then getting the context and setting server side React to false. So this only happens, essentially I'm only importing this, or I'm dynamically importing this, if we're in the client. We do not want to pre-render this on the server. And that's important with Next.js or anything else that would be using server-side React because we're dragging DOM elements around and we're changing the DOM. And if you do that because Next.js prefers to render on the server-side first, even a page or a component that has use client directive gets rendered on the server first, that first time, you're going to get what you've probably seen before if you've worked with Next.js, and that's a hydration mismatch. So if you move the DOM elements around and they don't match what was happening on the server, essentially, you're going to have that mismatch. This avoids all of that by saying, hey, don't even bother with the context until we're on the client side. 
Okay, moving on, let's just look at the data real quick. This just matches the data that we have on our JSON server, ID, artist, title, sequence. And then here the data is an array of those data items. Okay, now we're at the list component. It receives the data. Here are our two instances of state. So we've got our items and it starts out with the data. And then we also have an active item state that D and D kit needs, and we can set that active item. We start out with it being undefined. So here, when we set the type, if you're using TypeScript, it can be the data item. It can also be undefined. After that, for the input methods detection, we define our sensors, and this is something straight from the docs. I didn't change anything here. We're using sensors if we have touch devices and also a pointer sensor there. So that's simply how you define that. You can reference that in the docs to dive deeper if you want. Now there are four key functions as we work with our list with D and D kit. And what I really want to highlight or what you should compare and contrast if you look at other tutorials that use D and D kit, but only use an ID field, you should see where the ID and where the sequence are updated and how they relate in these four functions, because it's really all of the logic for your drag and drop list. So one is the remove item. So of course this just gets called when we'd click on our remove button. If you have one in your list and here we filter out that item, but then also we want to map over as we have the new array that has the item filtered out and we renumber the sequence here. So that's important to renumber those items. And then of course you update the state. The handle drag start. So this is triggered when you start dragging the item to a new spot. Now this is something more with directly with D and D kit. So we need active from this event. And this event type is something we imported at the top that comes straight from the D and D kit library. And after we get that active here, when we set the active item, we're finding the active item that matches the sequence versus the active ID. So that's important too. notice the sequence does relate back to the ID there. Okay, handle drag in. This is the largest function. Notice it has a drag end event that also comes from the DD kit library. Now we have active and over. And most of this, once again, is directly from the documentation. I didn't change much except when it came time to create an example that had a sequence versus the ID. So now I'm finding the active item to make sure the sequence equals the ID. And then the over item where the sequence equals the over item ID. And notice, once again, we're getting active and over from the event itself. So that's something that's defined in D&D Kit, so it knows when you're dragging over the item, which item is active, etc. Now we also need to define an active index and an over index. So here we're using items.findIndex, and we're once again comparing the sequence to the ID on the active item and on the over item. Now finally, we have an if statement, so if the active index does not equal the over index, then we set the items accordingly here because it's been dragged to a new place. So I defined updated workout data. I guess I was working with a workout example before I switched over to the playlist and I just didn't change that variable name. But it essentially is updated and we could just change that by going ahead and selecting both of those and we're defining updated here. And now we've got the array move function that we imported and we're moving that array around. And the important thing to notice here is that it uses the active index and the over index as well as the previous state. And then we get to map over all of that right in the example. Once again, change that sequence order just like we did when we removed an item because now we have just moved items in the sequence and it's important to once again renumber those sequence numbers so it reflects the current state of the list. And then handle drag cancel, well that's simple. We just set the active item back to undefined. So again, if you want to know more about how this works and more about the active versus the over in D&D kit, dive into those docs. But the important part here, I think to highlight that I didn't see elsewhere is the sequence versus the ID of these items. Okay, after that, we've essentially got our JSX, or using TypeScript, we've got TSX here. Here is the difference, once again, from traditional React to Next.js, the D&D context. So if you've got traditional React, you're just using D&D context here, 
Or if you've got Next.js, you're using DD context with no SSR, like I showed above. Okay, then we have a sortable context as well, because we also define that. It receives that strategy we imported, and you need to pass in the sequence of the items to the sortable context. And after that, we map over the items and have our sortable row. That's the component I created that we haven't looked at yet. It receives each item. It also gets the remove item function, so we can remove those items and we just call it but it's defined here in the parent. The drag overlay is important. Now you could delete the drag overlay or comment it out and then see how the list looks without it. I like it with the overlay. As you saw me dragging those things earlier, you could see the overlay and where the item was going to be before I released the item. Okay, a quick look at the sortable row before we're finished. And you can see here, we don't have nearly as many imports, but we are bringing in the use sortable hook from DD kit slash sortable. We also have the CSS from the DD kit utilities, and I didn't change much of that CSS at all from the example in the docs. We've got a button here, and I am using shad CN in this example as well. And then we've got the data type that we defined in the list component. So I'm just bringing that over. And now we've also got force dragging here as an optional uh, parameter here, and it's a Boolean. And I believe if we look back to that force dragging, yeah, we set that here on the drag overlay. We did not set it up here on the actual items above. So it just goes into that drag overlay. Okay, then coming down, once we've got that, oh, by the way, force dragging is set to false here in my example also. Then by default, of course it can be true, it's just set there by default. Then we have everything else here from the use sortable hook. You can look into that in the docs, but the main thing here is the use sortable hook ID needs to be the item sequence. Okay, after that, you've got the parent styles defined and you can see those. And of course this impacts how everything looks when you start dragging items, draggable styles, and you can look at everything else down here in the JSX, TSX, if you will, including this set node ref that was imported up here. So where those are set is important. And of course, you could change what part of the actual item you want to be able to drag. But if you set that whole item to draggable, for example, then you wouldn't have your button working. So you can't like make your buttons and links work if they're inside of the part that you grab. Maybe you just want to grab the number part of the item instead of that full title and description or something. You could change that around. But here we've got the item sequence again that's in that number square. Then you can see here was the draggable part and that gets the activator node ref. And this is where I had my title and description. It also gets the attributes and listeners spread into this div element that is the parent of everything that is actually grabbable that allows you to start dragging. And then here at the end, we've got the button as well. And that's pretty much that component. And that overall wraps up this tutorial. I hope it gives you a good example. It's not really just a code dump, but I did a quick once over with you to highlight out the important parts. I didn't type everything out from scratch, but at the same time, I think this gets you up and running just a little faster without me doing that. So everything works as expected. You can download the code. And if you were looking for an example like this, I hope it has helped you. A quick thank you to my patrons. Patrons, Holy Coder is a progress provider, and my junior patrons, Programming Polyglot, Isaac, Will, Ernie, Georgie, Mitch, Scott, Stacy, Philip, Abe, Javier, Michael, Alexi, you're all helping me reach my goals, and I thank you. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.